Welcome, everyone. Um, my name is EJ Brin, and I am the Director of External Relations at BC Council for International Education. I'm excited to have all of you here for what I think is going to be a really interesting webinar on Brunei Darussalam's education sector. Thank you for joining us today during a, what we know is a really busy time for you all. So before we begin, I would like to acknowledge that BCCIE is located on the unceded traditional territories of the Coast Salish people of Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh nations. I think it is important to acknowledge these lands as we are international, educator, international educators and welcome people here and um, acknowledging and understanding the implications of the work that we do on the uh, the people on the lands in which we work and play is an important step towards reconciliation and continuing the conver that conversation moving forward. Um, on to some housekeeping, as is standard, we will start with the presentation by our colleagues um, and follow that up with any questions from you all, the audience. Uh, feel free to type these questions into either the Q&A uh, box or the comment box as we go along. No need to save your questions to the end. We will be monitoring the Q&A box and Kate, my colleague, will join at the end um, to facilitate the questions with our colleagues and our presenters. In addition, if you have any technical um, issues, please feel free to message us and Kate and I will do our best to um, help answer your inquiry. Now. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce today's speakers for the day. Um, it is a great honor to welcome Ms. Amra Dickey from the High Commission of Canada in Brunei Darussalam. High Commissioner Dickey served as a departmental spokesperson on a wide range of issues in the Media Relations Office and then joined the Afghan Task Force also as a spokesperson. She has worked as a senior advisor in the Defense and Security Relations Division, leading the Canada-United States Defense cooperation and issues related to the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO. Um, joining her is our Trade Commissioner overseeing the education file from the High Commission of Canada in Brunei, Jerusalem, Ms. Eva Ng. Eva is a CISIAN professional, an alumnus of Canada, and boasts a wealth of experience in international business, banking, and entrepreneurship. For over a decade, she has served as a Trade Commissioner with Global Affairs Canada, spearheading commercial opportunities and fostering partnerships between Brunei and Canada. Her expertise spans diverse sectors, including education, ICT, agriculture, agri-food, and clean tech. Before I hand it over to Ava to begin the conversation, um, I want to emphasize that this is not an IRC se se session, so our speakers will not be able to respond to any of the recent changes at the federal or even at the provincial level. Um, we will be hosting an IRCC and PNC webinar on February 21st, and we can share that information in the chat box my, um, later. My colleague Kate will also provide some updates on upcoming webinars at the end of the event, so be sure to stay on after the Q&A portion to learn more about some of the upcoming opportunities at BCCIE. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Ava to kick off the presentation. Good afternoon, BC. Uh, for those of you I know, uh, good to see you guys again. And I actually am going to present uh, pass, uh, the, the, the presentation to my High Commissioner, Amber. He's going to go kick off with the opening remarks. Sure. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, it's a really a huge pleasure to speak with you all. Um, I, I have to admit that I'm British Columbian myself, so I, I have a certain hot spot, soft spot in my heart for uh, all of my and colleagues over there in BC. Um, uh, I am joining you from Brunei Jerusalem this morning. It is early here at 6 a.m. and I know it's just after lunch um, for everybody in, in British Columbia. Yeah, so we'll do our very best to keep everyone awake uh, this morning and this afternoon. Um, and uh, on that note, we're even I are going to exchange in a little bit of a, a Q&A uh, type, uh, type arrangement um, to discuss uh, a few of the questions that you have already raised uh, in the, you know, in the uh, preparations for today's meeting. Um, so Eva, for those of you who don't know her, is, uh, is Brunei's uh, Trade Commissioner Extraordinaire. Uh, you may have seen her um, earlier this year at some of the um, education conferences in, in Canada. Um, and if any of you are going to API um, in Perth in, the, in March, uh, you'll perhaps see her there as well. Um, so, uh, Eva, um, I will turn it straight over to you for, uh, you know, for your, your friendly and I hope nice uh, questions that you'll pose me uh, over the next uh, 45 minutes or so. 
Well, do, uh, Amber. So, Amber, you've been in Brunei for a while now. So, I'm, I'm just wondering where with the, the participants uh, uh, just joining us today. Uh, they are very, very keen to know about Brunei. I have been talking about Brunei a bit. So, it's it'd be interesting to hear from your perspective. Maybe you can tell them a little bit more about the, the market of you, um, your experience and stuff like that. Sure. So, um, so I've been in Brunei for about a year and a half now, um, and uh, I guess a little over a year and a half. Um, I mean, like like many others, I, I think when I came here, I didn't know a lot about uh, Brunei, um, and I think that's a common uh, reality for for many in Canada and elsewhere in the world. Um, so, for those of you who don't know, Brunei is a, a very small sultanate um, in on the island of Borneo. Um, it is surrounded by Malaysia um, on essentially all sides, uh, and Indonesia is also present on the island of Borneo. Um, Brunei is a small uh, a small sultanate with about four hundred and fifty thousand people. Um, that being said, it's a, it, it has had quite a prosperous uh, past uh, since around the 1960s. Uh, um, it uh, it has a fairly strong um, GDP per capita at about 31 uh, 31.5 thousand US dollars per uh, per capita. Um, that makes it the second largest uh, in ASEAN after Singapore. Um, its official language is Malay, uh, but English is widely widely spoken um, and taught uh, most of the both primary, secondary, and um, university uh, educational programs are taught in English. Uh, so English is, is very strong here. Um, the capital city is Bandar Seri Begawan, uh, which is uh, about 300,000 uh, of the population live in the capital city. Um, there is also, though, a second uh, center uh, down south where, in fact, there's a lot of Canadians, uh, Kuala Belait, which is where the oil and gas sector is, is uh, based. Um, Speaking of oil and gas, uh, Brunei's primary economy is is oil and gas related. Uh, it's it accounts for about ninety percent of its GDP, um, either in upstream, midstream, or downstream um, industries. Um, so, from an educational perspective, I think you'll see a lot of strengths and interest um, from Brunei in in the oil and gas, in engineering, um, increasingly in some of the sustainable and green technology areas as well. Um, and I think the other aspect of this is that Brunei also realizes that its oil and gas is running out, as is the case in many other uh, um, sectors in the world. Um, and frankly, you know, I think they recognize that they have to phase out uh, some of these older traditional fossil fuels, um, and they are looking to diversify, diversify their industry beyond oil and gas. Um, so there are a few um, options, certainly for uh, for Canadian institutions uh, who are looking to um, to offer some options for uh, Brunei students and Brunei universities on the um, on other sectors uh, other than oil and gas. Um, it's worth noting that the education system here is modeled on the British system. So Brunei was, of course, the British uh, uh, was occupied and colonized by the, the British, uh, like Canada. Um, however, they've imported the, Brunei, the British system. Uh, so you'll see the IGCSEs, uh, A-levels, um, generally speaking, from Bruneian students. Um, but there are a couple of uh, large international schools here, quite large actually, uh, which also offer the IV program. So you'll see both coming from applicants from Brunei. Um, I think it's worth uh, mentioning that the literacy rate here is very high, about 90, little, about 98% uh, literacy. Um, and the overall PISA scores are 50, 50th globally um, with a PISA score of uh, 423. Um, and they're particularly strong in science and math. Um, I won't go into, uh, you know, all the specific demographics, uh, but the one thing worth noting about Brunei is that um, the, the majority of Bruneians are Malay. Um, however, there is a very uh, large uh, ethnic population here, both of um, Brunei's uh, seven um, recognized um, indigenous groups, uh, as well as uh, previous Chinese, uh, ethnic Chinese immigrants um, who, uh, call, uh, who um, were resident in Brunei uh, for a number of years. Um, a lot of those individuals don't have Bruneian citizenship. Uh, they'll either have Malaysian uh, passports um, or they'll have uh, Bruneian stateless uh, uh, certificates. Um, so when you see applicants from Brunei, uh, you will see um, applicants who are both um, Bruneian citizens, but uh, but also you know, ethnic Chinese, um, Indian, um, or indigenous uh, who have uh, perhaps don't have the, the same citizenship documents as others. Um, let me just fly through, see if there's anything else I'm missing here. Um, I don't think so. The only other thing that's maybe worth uh, um, highlighting here is that Brunei's youth unemployment rate is quite high. 
Um, the reason I mention this is that uh, Brunei has a, a tendency to send a lot of its, uh, its best students abroad for education. It has tended to focus on um, the UK and Australia for uh, uh, international education options. Um, unfortunately, what Brunei is finding, I think, is that a lot of the students that are coming back um, from these, uh, these graduate programs um, are not as employable as they might like. Uh, so there's a huge push right now in Brunei to increase the employability of graduates. Um, and I think that's a particular strength uh, of Canadian institutions. So I think it's something worth flagging here that if you're interested in this, in this um, market, uh, that you know, programs that can be directly translated into em employment for, uh, for Brunei's youth uh, will be particularly valuable. Um, and I think that's it, Eva, I'll turn it back to you for, uh, for the next hard question. You forgot to mention that Brunei is a, a home to lush for rainforest, great weather, and uh, great TCs in the region. Just kidding. <laughs> uh, so you, earlier you mentioned briefly about the uh, that the system is uh, modeled in the British uh, curriculum. So, so could you please tell us a bit more about you know is it uh, is the system comparable to Singapore? Uh, in fact, you know, give a bit of an insight and focus on the, uh, the Bruneian system. Yeah, um, so so yes, in short, uh, Brunei and, and Singapore have a very close relationship across the board. Um, so traditionally, you know, even before the UK was a destination, a lot of Bruneian students will will go to boarding school, for example, in secondary um, uh, in Singapore. Um, and so the the crossovers are 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 very notable. Um, you know, Brunei's education system, especially compared to other countries in ASEAN, is very well developed. Um, it has uh, strong investments in infrastructure and resources at both the uh, secondary and at the university level. Um, as I mentioned previously, there's particular emphasis on STEM, uh, STEM education, and, and some, I think, an increasing focus on vocational training for the reasons I've already um, outlined. Um, and I think the, the other thing to flag for Brunei in terms of, of the comparison with Singapore and elsewhere in the region is that while we tend to look at Singapore, we should also perhaps look at Malaysia and Indonesia, which are now, you know, which are, well, have always been located on the island of Borneo. Um, and, and the notable uh, uh, reason why we should be focusing on this is because, as many know, there are plans uh, at the moment to develop a new capital city for Indonesia on the uh, on the other side of the island from Brunei in uh, in Kalimantan. Um, and so I think this off uh, offers some opportunities to collaborate with uh, Malaysian and Indonesian institutions as well, and really uh, capitalize on on the what, what is actually a very large market on Borneo Island, about 60 million people. Back to you. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, pretty good uh, insights in terms of the education systems. Now, um, the participants are very keen to know about partnerships, right? So perhaps we can talk a little bit about the partnerships, given the strengths of both Canadians and Bruneian education systems, right? Um, there are definitely ample opportunities for collaborations and partnerships. Um, could you perhaps elaborate a little bit more on the professional areas? Uh, are there a lot of faculties and student mobility opportunities between um, Canada and Bruneian? Um, so certainly there are. Um, I have to be frank that I don't know that we've taken advantage of, of these opportunities thus far. Um, so I think there's an opportunity for, for people to come into this market now um, and really establish some of these partnerships. Um, Brunei, you know, as I mentioned, Brunei has had a long experience of working with the, the UK in particular and recently uh, increasingly Australia. Um, I think it's also worth mentioning that from a partnership perspective, Brunei has very increasingly strong partnerships with Chinese universities uh, and uh, and we've seen some growth in partnerships with Korea and Japan as well. Um, so they are quite used to this. Um, however, I think there's a there's there's room for growth for for Canadian institutions in particular. Um, you know some particular areas of, of interest uh, in addition to what I well I guess essentially as, as I've mentioned thus far would be sustainability, um, technical integration, uh, workforce development, uh, employability, um, ICT uh, sectors as well, um, and I think that uh, that beyond seed students, so their their seed students uh, students will be very strong. Um, but uh, you know there are opportunities across the board um, in a, a full range of uh, of sectors. I can Eva, do you want me to go straight into the the UTB and UBD uh, um, opportunities? Yes, please go ahead. Yes, all right. 
Um, so essentially, there are two main uh, main universities here in Brunei. Uh, the UBD is the University of Brunei Jerusalem, which is effectively the national uh, university, the larger of the two. Um, UTB is the uh, technical university of Brunei, um, and it's a slightly smaller partner uh, of UB, UBD. Um, so if we look at uh, specifically at each of these institutions, we've seen interest certainly from both of them um, in partnerships with uh, Canadian institutions, uh, particularly on the sustainability side so far, um, but also on really unique niche areas like design technology and uh, fashion, uh, you know, and interesting, interesting elements like that. So I think if you have a, if your institution has a particular specialty, it's always worth uh, considering whether or not there, there might be interest in Brunei. Um, but uh, for each one, I think from UBD, we've heard very specific interest in things like business management, business administration programs, um, biodiversity, sustainability, uh, medicine. Um, UTB, we've heard, uh, heard from them that they're particularly interested in food science and technology, nutrition, agrotech, uh, energy, um, engineering, uh, doctors of business administration. Um, I think the one thing to flag here uh, as well from a partnership perspective is that there's enormous interest in medicine, dentistry, nursing. Um, however, I, I need to be frank that, uh, that this has always been a challenge for us uh, in working with Canadian, well, I guess collaborating between Canadian and Bruneian institutions. Um, because Brunei is very used to the UK uh, and Australian medical uh, and dentistry program, which is a a three plus suite three where you you apply straight into medicine uh, as an undergrad um, this is very different from the canadian uh, system where we have an undergraduate degree and then you apply on these uh, advanced um, diplomas after degrees afterwards um, so this has always created a little bit of inconsistencies between canada and brunei in terms of establishing partnerships um, but if your institutions are able to do uh, or able to be flexible in any way in terms of uh, how those uh, those programs are run, um, Brunei would be very interested um, in them. Um, and then the last thing I'll say, as I mentioned at the outset, that I think specialized training programs uh, would be of particular interest, especially to folks like UTB, um, that uh, that they are looking for really work work workforce upskilling uh, or you know. Uh, graduation employability uh, programs that, that would give their students a, an edge in terms of, uh, of working effectively in the workforce afterwards. And if I may add on to the potions about the medicines uh, uh, collaborations from the University of Brunei Darussalam. So uh, what I found from the uh, last conversations uh, in Canada was that uh, uh, UBD, the current medicine uh, what do you call it, uh, curriculum is uh, 3 plus 3. Sorry, 3 plus, yeah, it's in the 3 plus 3 formats, I think. And in Canada, it's uh, 4 plus something else, uh, which why, which is why it's a little bit challenging to match it uh, in terms of curriculum. So but if at any of the university there are flexibles, are keen to explore this, or are able to, uh, we'll be happy to put you in touch with the Dean of uh, Health Science uh, at the University of Brunei Darussalam. So that's uh, that on the uh, 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 focus for opportunities area for partnerships. Um, I'm just wondering if there are any demand for associate degree or dip diploma programs in Brunei, um, since this is a small market, right, Amber? So um, what do you think about that? I mean, I think yes. Uh, um, certainly, there there are options for uh, you know for associate degrees and diploma programs. Um, this is. I think the idea of an associate degree or, or diploma programs is relatively new for Bruneians. Um, Canada's market is is much more advanced in terms of looking at at, uh, at this type of uh, of degree or vocational training. Um, however, as I mentioned at the outset, there's an increasing um, demand for this type uh, of program. Um, certainly, to send their students, so there there is interest in sending students to to these universities. But I think there's also an interest in setting up partnerships with Canadian universities to offer curriculum uh, or to uh, you know to to offer um, joint degree programs uh, or any number of uh, of other options um, alongside some of the Bruneian institutions. Um, and I should mention as well, I, I've mentioned the two major universities, um, but there are also um, some smaller um, technical uh, vocational. Uh, 
colleges here. Um, so IBTE is the largest of them uh, and is the, the sort of public uh, vocational training um, center. Um, and there's a few smaller ones, Lexmana College and Cosmopolitan College. Um, and a lot of those uh, colleges are also working um, with schools from Malaysia and the UK and elsewhere to provide, uh, to provide joint uh, um, degree and diploma programs as well. Um, so certainly there are a number of opportunities uh, in that area. And the, the smaller ones, they are mostly private owned uh, institutions compared to IBT, which is uh, owned by the government. Am I right? That's correct. Of course it is, Eva. You're you're the expert. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah. Uh, so when we thought we've spoken about an associate degree. Now I'm going to put you on the spot. Um, you know, just wondering why should Canadian institutions look into exploring Brunei? Yeah, market. It's small. It's uh, unheard of for some, and it is. I mean, located uh, in in the ideal location, stuff like that. What makes Brunei an attractive partner for Canadian institutions? So you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna start by saying, listen, we know that Brunei, as you said, it's a small market. Um, so if you're looking for the volume um, of students that uh, that you're going to uh, get from Philippines or from Malaysia, uh, th that volume is simply not going to come from Brunei. Um, however, uh, what you will get from Brunei um, from a recruitment perspective is that you'll get very strong students uh, with excellent um, English skills, um, really the, cre the cream of the crop um, in, in terms of, uh, of their international students. We've, we've heard this from a number of Canadian institutions that have already done recruiting in Brunei, uh, U of T, uh, UBC, uh, a few of the other, uh, the very large um, institutions have, have informed us that Brunei students are, are excellent. Um, from a partnership perspective, I think Brunei is, a, is for all of the, you know, the reasons that, uh, that we could expect, um, Brunei is a, a monarchy um, with the same leader. It has had the same leader for, for over 50 years. Um, it's a it's a very stable uh, political environment. Um, the the context here is that the you know the government is relatively predictable, um, both in terms of of processes, um, but what you what you're told is what you get uh, when you're working with them. Uh, there's not very much corruption uh, in Brunei. Uh, you know, it is a very relatively easy place to work. Um, it, especially when you start to look at some of the other um, potential markets in the region. Um, Brunei is, has the money um, when it, is, it so desires uh, to invest in really innovative and cutting edge research. Um, it's really quite keen to have these programs uh, move forward uh, in order to, to diversify its economy. Um, it desperately needs uh, this type of investment and these type of partnerships. Um, you know, I think it, despite what people might hear. So I know many of you might have Googled uh, Brunei before you, you hopped onto this call. Uh, and, you know, if you, if you Google Brunei, you know, the first three or four pages of Google are, are likely going to talk about things like Sharia law, uh, you know, things like a, a very uh, wealthy uh, um, oil rich state, um, all of which are true. Uh, but Brunei is actually, despite some of the, the hits that you'll get in Google, it's a very multicultural country. Um, it is actually very tolerant, um, and I think it's worth mentioning here that uh, that although we can all have various opinions on on Sharia law, um, it tends not to, and it has not uh, ever used the worst uh, worst punishments um, that are uh, prescribed under Sharia law. Um, it is has a very stable uh, legal system here, um, and I you know I think well we always recommend to to educational institutions to uh, you know to keep the duty of care of their students in mind. Um, we've never seen any any issues that would be a particular concern um, in terms of of, uh, of uh, Sharia law here in Brunei. Um, that being said, uh, you know I think it's worth mentioning these things. But when your students or your faculty uh, or you uh, decide to come to Brunei, uh, what you'll actually see is a very diverse country. Uh, you know, you don't have to be worried about whether or not you're wearing a, a hijab uh, or, you know, short sleeves or shorts. Uh, it will be a very, uh, very easy uh, country to live in um, and to operate in. Thank you for that. In fact, I wear shorts quite a bit. So, guys, if you want to come here and wear shorts, it's fine. <laughs> Now, uh, that, uh, jokes aside, just to add on to that, uh, in terms of partnership, uh, 
for the past be pre-COVID time, uh, if you were to come to Brunei and talk about partnerships, the response or the willingness to actually work with Canada is a little bit uh, slower or it's not really very uh, warm because the, the of the you know the incline to work with uh, UK, Australia and ASEAN uh, and countries just because of the familiar, familiarity with those markets, uh, the curriculums uh, and the exchanges of uh, uh, understandings of all those things. Um, but it's not to say that that the Brunei institutions are not keen to work with Canada. In fact, um, I've seen over the past 10 years, the transitions of Brunei uh, institutions keen to work with Canada, but it's just that they don't know much about us. They don't understand uh, our education system, the types of partnerships, collaborations. They don't understand the link between university, polytechnics, the, uh, the uh, what do you call that, how, what, how is it that polytechnic is offering a H&D diploma and how is it being translated to a university, those kind of concepts, it is something new to them because when they see university working with a polytechnic, they, they think it's H&D diploma, full stop. They never thought that uh, it is uh, actually can be, you know, uh, transitioning to a degree or for, for, for some institutions, undergrad or, or even uh, as far as professional degree. They've seen it. Um, they both have went to Canada. They participated in the, the CBIE in, and, and two of the CBIEs. They have spoken to some of you and they finally realized that, wow, this is actually a pretty cool uh, uh, system. Uh, they With the information, the knowledge, actually, it helps them to understand how they can work, uh, uh, work with you guys better. And uh, it has opened quite a bit of door. And more so uh, in the uh, past uh, few years, I've seen the, the interest to work with Canada. But again, um, both sides, again, need to kind of close the gaps in, in knowledge uh, sharing and stuff like that. So don't be afraid to come over here and have a chit chat uh, with the institutions to get to know more about the partnership uh, um, uh, opportunities here. And they, they are keen to talk to you or to learn a bit more on that. Now, having said that, I'm also keen to find out from you, Amber. You know, has Brunei actually established uh, any internet internet internationalization uh, project uh, with other countries of uh, interest? Yes, they they have. Um, so you know, as I as I mentioned, uh, from an ASEAN perspective, uh, we we are seeing a lot of collaboration with, particularly with Malaysian um, institutions. Um, however, you know, there's a number of uh, there's a number of so many partnerships. It's hard to keep track uh, exactly um, of them all. Um, certainly, Malaysia is a big one. Uh, you know, for example, joint law programs uh, between uh, Malaysia, UK, and uh, Brunei. Um, uh, you know, upstream uh, oil and gas, that sort of thing. Um, UK, uh, you know, UK is across the board because of the, the very close relationship that they've had in the past. Um, Australia, uh, I think Australia is, is still nascent on the internationalization and the partnership side. Um, they're working towards some partnerships with Australia, but it's not at the level yet um, that the UK is. Um, I think, as I mentioned, the big the big player right now in the internationalization and partnership field is is China. Um, China has a couple of large investments um, here in in Brunei, uh, which has been used to fund a lot of scholarship programs and uh, university partnership programs um, into Chinese universities. Um, so, you know, if that's an, an area of potential interest um, to to your institution as well, um, there might be some opportunities for uh, you know for partnerships um, in that respect as well. Um, again, with a large focus on on oil and gas. Um, and uh, and uh, STEM uh, research. Okay. So, uh, you know, we've spoken about partnerships uh, in the academic context and in industry uh, context. What about uh, beyond the uh, academic and cultural aspects? Are there any economic uh, or strategic regions for Canadian institutions to consider partnerships in Brunei? Yeah, so as I've, I've as I've mentioned, uh, you know, Borneo Island is is a, is actually a massive. Pe people don't necessarily realize the the size and the scale of Borneo Island. I think when we think of Borneo Island, we have um, sort of these these ideas of of a sparsely inhabited, um, you know, jungle island in the middle of, a, of an ocean somewhere. Um, and, and in many cases, that's true. Uh, but it is, you know, a, a significant market um, and a growing market that, that not a lot of institutions or countries have paid attention to. 
Uh, so Borneo Island itself is a is a very significant um, uh, potential market. Um, but also beyond that, there's an organization here called Bimiaga that also brings in um, you know sections of of the Philippines, um, uh, in, in island in Indonesia and elsewhere. Um, that has that there's a, a drive I think to to centralize um, a lot of the the economic um, and uh, and educational opportunities <clears throat> in that region. Um, so for Canadian institutions who are um, who are in this market already or who are interested in tapping into some of these new markets um, that that Br Brunei amongst the countries and the regions um, incorporated in in Borneo and in Bimyaga um, Brunei is probably the most stable um, and uh, and certainly the best English uh, the best uh, or at least the most stable um, uh, system in terms of processing and, and MOUs um, so if you're going to work with this region Brunei is an interesting option uh, to make as sort of your 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 central um, link into Borneo Island uh, or Bimyaga. Right. So we have been uh, talking about the partnership opportunities uh, uh, for for Canadian institutions. Let's switch gears a bit to the recruitment side. Um, so I'm sure there's a lot of people who are also interested in the recruitment side, but not to say that we can't come back to the partnership uh, uh, discussions. Uh, we can always do that in a bit later on. Um, uh, so what you, you mentioned briefly about, you know, uh, for Canadian institutions to come into Brunei uh, to do recruitment or, or partnership uh, earlier. So how can Canadian university actually attract uh, Bruneian students over to Canada? Um, so, uh, you know, really quickly, I think certainly from an outsider coming into Brunei, I've lived in a number, I've lived in a number of countries um, internationally. Uh, you know, I've come from Tokyo uh, previously. I was in Brazil before that. I was in Europe before that. Um, and uh, from an, an international school perspective, Brunei is one of the best served markets I've ever been in, um, considering its size. So, you know, for a country of about 440,000 people, um, about three and a half to 4,000 of those are, are in um, private international schools. Um, and, uh, and so when you're, when you're starting to look at, uh, at the quality of the students that are coming out of these institutions, it's extra incredibly high. Uh, you know, Brunei's largest um, international school here, um, JIS, Jerodong International School, is ranked, uh, I think, the top third uh, um, in a school in ASEAN. Um, it's, uh, you know, high, extraordinarily high uh, results um, in IB and in A-levels. Uh, and so, you know, in terms of the quality of the students that you're getting uh, out of Brunei, they're, they're going to be extraordinarily good. Um, the other, uh, and I've mentioned this a number of times, I think it's worth re-emphasizing the level of English proficiency in Brunei is very, very high. Uh, so despite the fact that Malay is the official language, um, what you'll often see, in fact, are people who, who've gone through their entire um, school uh, system and have, in fact, don't speak Malay uh, um, well uh, or at all. Um, the other thing to flag uh, as well for some of the institutions here, especially from British Columbia, is that there are a number of very strong Chinese language um, schools here in Brunei. Uh, so they're an additional um, recruiting uh, possibility as well. Um, and, uh, and I think for Bruneians, uh, Canada represents, frankly, Canada's seen as a little bit far. It's a little bit the wild, wild west uh, of studying abroad for Bruneians who are very used to going to the UK, uh, where there's a lot of their compatriots. Um, but I think for, for many people, um, Canada is seen as a, as a, a new destination that's interesting and, and attractive and a little bit sexy in terms of, uh, of some of the opportunities that exist. Um, we, we play well from a diversity and inclusion perspective for people who are, are seeking that. Um, and, uh, um, and I think the, the career opportunities as well, um, either to stay on in Canada um, or to um, bring your, your very career focused um, degree or diploma back to Brunei uh, is very attractive um, as well. Um, uh, the only thing I, I should flag um, for, for some people here is that Brunei is not really a market that we've seen for K-12 um, education. Uh, well, I know if a handful of people who've done this type of education in Canada, um, generally speaking, the English uh, quality of education here is, is very, um, very good. Uh, and so it's not necessarily a language, um, a language destination for, for Bruneians. And I can attest to that, uh, having, I have to, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, taken the ALTS uh, exams, and I, I've done a bit of a comparison of uh, the average score that Bruneian students would uh, score in their ALTS, 
it's uh, around eight to nine uh, average. Uh, the worst one is uh, in terms of results, maybe perhaps a 7.5, I think. So that was what, what I gathered in terms of a, a statistic across uh, talking to students. So eight to nine in terms of uh, scoring for the uh, outs uh, exams. Um, and also, you know, for BC, and right, you forgot to mention, they have a little bit of an advantage of why Bruneian students, when they think about Canada, they should go to Canada, Vancouver to study. And why is that, do you think? Um, Because it's the best? No. <laughs> um, no, Vancouver. Uh, <laughs> Vancouver. Vancouver is seen as uh, uh, as close. It's it and it is uh, physically the closest um, uh, um, option for for Bruneian uh, students. Um, and in fact, um, according to the twenty twenty one census, uh, Bruneian there's about two thousand Bruneians in in Vancouver, which you know for a country the size of Brunei is actually a fairly significant number um, if you look at it, and that's only the ones that have uh, declared themselves as Brunei in the in the census. So in reality, the, the numbers are, are probably much higher. Um, you know, Bruneians are, so Brunei is a very nature focused country. So there's, there is a lot of jungle, um, there's a lot of opportunities to play outside, uh, mountain bike, uh, hike, um, and, and I think there's a certain cultural affinity uh, with, uh, with the lifestyle um, it, uh, of British Columbia specifically. Um, I mean, elsewhere as well, but uh, but the mountains and the lakes and the uh, nature of, of um, BC uh, plays very well uh, for, for Bruneians. Um, and Bruneian parents, uh, you know, Bruneian parents are, this is a very fi uh, family oriented, uh, oriented country, let's say. Um, and I think uh, Bruneian parents like to know that their kids are still close-ish uh, to them uh, in the uh, event of an emergency or, or just to come visit. So for them, I think Vancouver is also a very attractive um, option just because of the flight options into uh, into BC. <clears throat> and to speak on behalf of those who are not influenced by parents' decisions, uh, people like me who decided to go to Vancouver as my first choice, is uh, indeed uh, the diversity, the fun, the, the energy that uh, we've, we've, we've seen and also what we've heard in terms of the bridge between Brunei and Canada. In the past, there's quite a lot of uh, uh, migrations from Brunei to uh, Vancouver and then to Edmonton. Uh, why I chose Vancouver at first, I thought that, hey, it's as far as I can get away from Brunei, you know, um, and, and that's the first. Uh, and, and just being in there, Vancouver provide me with opportunities to be uh, unique, a different landscape from from Brunei or the Asian culture. So that that's uh, one thing why I chose uh, Canada on top of, I mean, Vancouver on top of the uh, other reasons. Now, we, we focus about, we've spoken about why Vancouver. Uh, I'm just wondering, you know, uh, with, with if a recruiter or uh, any recruiters that come to Brunei to, uh, to, to conduct the recruitment activities, uh, what would you say uh, uh, would be the top uh, three disciplines that, you know, a Brunei student would be interested in pursuing? So what we're seeing right now um, is an interest in, in, as I mentioned, life science and medicine. Um, so dentistry, medicine, uh, nursing. Um, if if those if some of the sort of uh, um, institutional um, issues can be overcome, um, it's worth mentioning though that uh, that from the Bruneian um, parents and students, uh, they're very used to the UK system. However, um, as I mentioned at the outset, there's there is a large um, uh, ethnic Chinese and Indian population who are who may not be you know Bruneian citizens, um, and those individuals. Uh, I should step back perhaps before I keep going and say that there the Bruneian um, citizens have access to uh, to significant um, education scholarships paid for by the Ministry of Education um, in a in a range of specific um, subjects, and we can share those perhaps through BC. Um, BCCIE um, afterwards, um, but uh, so so it's the Bruneian students that are going to be very focused on on the educational um, options being exactly like they are in the UK. Um, but for anyone who is not a Bruneian citizen, as I mentioned, the, the ethnic Chinese or um, Indian or increasingly Myanmar, you know, we've seen a number of uh, of um, nationalities um, here in Brunei. Um, they are perfectly happy to, you know, to look into dentistry and medicine and nursing um, according to the Canadian um, system. Um, we're also seeing a, an interest in, in social science and management. Uh, so things like creative multimedia design, as I mentioned before, bioinformatics, um, urban studies and planning is also an interesting one. Um, a massive boom in interest in psychology, uh, computer science, uh, cyber 
um, food science, uh, etc. Um, and then the last one, of course, is the ever going engineering. Uh, so an engineering degree is as attractive to a Bruneian parent as it is to uh, a lot of the other in, uh, Asian parents. Uh, there's a, a huge push uh, for a lot of students to, to take an engineering degree. Um, and to the degree, to the extent that those degrees can be useful um, for employment afterwards, uh, it's all the better from, from a Bruneian perspective. And for all of you who are interested in the comprehensive uh, list of uh, programs that the Bruneian scholarship students are, are interested in pursuing, you feel free to reach out to me or you can reach out to the BCCIE, Kate, and uh, she will direct you with the information. Now, um, we've spoken about, you know, types of programs and stuff like that. What about the decisions, you know? Um, how do Brunei students perceive Canada in terms of short terms and long term as a study destinations? And what do you think are the dynamics uh, influencing the perceptions of uh, students and parents in Brunei regarding the prioritizations of education quality over brand name and recognitions when they consider you know, private post-secondary universities? Yeah, so... Um... Um, I'd, I'd seen this question come up as well in the in the in the um, chat box. Um, so why don't I just address um, right away the sort of brand name uh, brand name versus uh, you know excellent education. Um, I, so speaking frankly, there is a still a little bit of of the brand name uh, attraction here in Brunei. I, I think that's a holdover of of the UK system, frankly, where you know where there's a, a large interest in having the best degree from the best universities. Um, that being said, you know, as I as I mentioned, I think what they're realizing is that the best name universities uh, with the, the highest level of degrees are not necessarily the most employable ind individuals uh, when they come back to Brunei. Uh, so there is a rising interest, I think, in uh, in schools that offer innovative, um, interesting, attractive uh, um, programs with high with a demonstrated um, ability to uh, to attract um, employment afterwards. Um, it, when we sell Canada to Bruneian students, one of the, the, the biggest um, selling points that we have is that all Canadian institutions are high quality. Uh, you don't need to have a degree from the, the top um, universities in Canada, according to the Times uh, or the QS ratings, uh, in order to have an excellent uh, degree. Um, uh, it's, you know, you can attend any of them and come out with a, an equally good, um, and in some cases, depending on your area of specialization, better, uh, you know, experience and employability um, options uh, afterwards. Um, and I think this is increasingly attractive to them. It will be, it will continue to be a bit of uh, um, a bit of a challenge, I think, in the next five to 10 years as they come through this, this uh, must have gone to Oxford or Harvard, uh, you know, kind of uh, um, kind of phase. But I think there's a huge opportunity here for Canadians to get in early um, on on some of the the um, specialized um, programs um, in areas of interest um, for for Brunei. In fact, the ministries of, of education's uh, scholarship departments and the accreditation departments uh, had uh, shared with us to to encourage Canadian institutions who do visit or who want to be in touch with them to have a, a, a conversation with them because they want they're keen to learn more about you guys. They're keen to learn about your programs, uh, the formats, uh, particularly the credit transfer, just because they're very uh, used to the uh, uh, British systems. The they had a bit of difficulties to uh, kind of. Uh, uh, trans, uh, what do you call it? Translate the, the the thought process away from the UK systems and uh, see how they can actually assist students. May they be scholarship students or non scholarship students? Because we do get uh, uh, Brunei non non Bruneian citizens or permanent residents who come back to Brunei who are keen to still you know work here and they still go to MOE to to find out. Oh, I've got my degree from Canadian institute so and so. Uh, can they be accredited? Uh, can, uh, can I still, you know, apply to the workforce kind of thing? So uh, Brunei side is really open to have a chat with all, all of you. Um, if you do visit, uh, we, we highly encourage you to have a, a meeting uh, scheduled with the DISA Ministry of Education's uh, departments, uh, which we, I can help you to facilitate. Now, we spoke about, you know, Brunei not being a language uh, market, a university like market, and, uh, slowly, hopefully, uh, in the near future, uh, also a polytechnic kind of uh, market to go getting there. Um, I'm just wondering, you know, as a recruiter, if they come over here, do you think, um, you know, they need to work with service agents? Do you think it is a market that uh, is um, effective to work with service agents or they are okay to just come in, do their own recruitment without working with them? Um, and if so, how would these student? I'm sorry. How would these uh, institutions uh, uh, connect with the, the the service agents? Or 
for some is uh, recruiters uh, they will be interested to know how they can actually connect with the career counselors of each uh, institution because some schools they prefer to uh, work directly with uh, institutions right what's your recommendation then Amber? yeah so i mean I, the quick answer to this um eva as you well know is you can do both um and eva eva is a very helpful um uh tool uh, in order to connect uh canadian institutions Institutions either to potential um, education agents um, here in Brunei um, or directly with some of the institutions. Um, frankly, Brunei is such a small market that if you come here and you just want to, you know, have a, a day or two in in the market and and touch base directly with the institutions, that's that's definitely possible. Um, it is more difficult to engage with the Ministry of Education institutions, so the public um, schools. Uh, it does require a little bit more um, effort because we need to inform and request permission from the Ministry of Education to go into their schools. Um, but if you're looking to engage directly with the international schools, uh, with Jaredong International or with um, the International School of Brunei, uh, then you can, uh, they have very strong career um, counseling uh, programs in both those schools, and you can do that without any assistance at all. Um, there are, though, um, a few, about five uh, service agents, so again, very small. Um, one of the service agents here is actually a Canadian alumni uh, and has been fairly effective in, in advocating for some, some Canadian, uh, including British Columbian um, institutions. Um, so there are options uh, depending on what you're, you're looking for. And to add on for those of you and then, who uh, might... Think... Sorry. Oh, no, go, go ahead, uh, add on. I was just saying, I think, I think we might need to wrap up fairly quickly and take questions. So maybe we'll, we'll make this the last, sure. uh, the last question. Definitely. So um, just uh, to add on quickly that uh, for those of you who are interested to find out if there's any education fairs in Brunei, they are. Uh, some of them are run by the uh, service agents themselves, and they are one that's run by the uh, Ministry of Education's uh, Expo. Um, I can, um, if for those of you who are interested to learn a bit more about the background of these uh, affairs, I'm more than happy to, uh, to speak to you individually. You can reach out to me there again. Uh, in terms of educational affairs, uh, uh, Brunei hasn't been that, doing that uh, for a few years, but uh, for those who are keen to come over here to recruit, we still support you all uh, in terms of uh, your visits uh, at activities in here. Um, I guess, in, in lastly, uh, in terms of uh, students, uh, how many students are currently studying and are projected to study in Canada from Brunei? Um, and now, Amra, what do you think are the parameters in terms of influence decision making of the students and parents in Brunei uh, in order to choose Canada as a, as a study destination? Yeah, so really, really quickly, um, and then we can take a few questions. Uh, so I think that the big, the big, one of the big calculations for Brunei, although, although it is a very wealthy um, country, uh, it is a very price conscious uh, um, location. Um, so certainly the affordability of Canadian education is a big selling point, as are um, scholarship uh, opportunities for, for their students, um, either through the Ministry of Education here or directly from the Canadian um, institutions themselves. Um, so, you know, certainly scholarships uh, programs for, uh, you know, for Bruneian students uh, or international students will, will be very attractive. Um, there are some opportunities, uh, for example, to partner with um, Brunei's um, universities for what's called Discovery Year. So they, they tend to send um, Bruneian students abroad for a period of either one to two semesters as part of their degrees here. Um, and that's another attractive way to get Bruneian students to Canada. Um, According to, it's it's actually hard to track exactly who how many Bruneian uh, students are in Canada because they don't all hold Bruneian um, citizens or citizenship. Um, so for our immigration records are are not that reliable. We guess though based on who we've talked to and know that there's probably about a hundred students Bruneian students in Canada at the moment, um, and anywhere between twenty to forty going uh, every year to to various institutions. Um, and then the last thing I'll say is that, uh, you know, Brunei, as with any small place, um, I think uh, for Bruneians, there's always the possibility and I think the attraction of staying abroad. Um, so we find that Canada's migration policy is is actually a very um, positive um, selling point for for, for Bruneian um, students, uh, the uh, so the Ministry of Education scholarship recipients will be bonded and have to come back to Brunei after their education. Um, but anyone else who's studying in Canada independently um, will be very interested in the possibility of permanent residency and eventually um, citizenship. And uh, and you know these things are are certainly attractive for them. Thank you very much. So I guess that's a wrap up in terms of uh, our discussions of partnership and recruitment. And I think we can now take questions from the participants.
Yes. Thank you so much, Ambra and Eva, for all the insights they just shared with us. Um, and really want to say thank you for coming to join this webinar this early. Uh, we know this is the early time for you in Brunei. So really appreciate that. Um, um, Ambra, you already answered uh, the questions in the Q&A box. Uh, so I think we're good for that one. And there is another question in the chat box from Anne. Uh, she's asking, is Brunei a ranking sensitive market for student recruitment? Um, so the, the quick answer is is yes and no. So yes, in, in some respects. So the Ministry of Education, um, if, uh, if they are going to grant a government scholarship to a Bernayan student, um, the institution has to be, Eva, correct me which list it's on, like the top 200 of the QS? Correct, that's a top uh, 200 of the QS uh, ranking. Yeah, um, so so institutions that, that meet that, uh, meet that, that ranking um, will be eligible for Ministry of Education um, scholarships. Um, in fact, and if you're a top 20 um, institution, uh, students can study whatever they want. Um, if you're after tw top 20, uh, but but below the below the 200, then the students can pick from a selection of um, degree programs which are pre-approved by the MOE. So in that respect, uh, yes, there's there's very very um, strict uh, regulations in terms of, of ranking of universities. Um, once we get outside that group though, um, as I mentioned, we're still sort of dealing with some residual uh, residual preference for, for top ranked uh, institutions. Um, but as I mentioned, I think a growing, a growing willingness and, and interest in exploring um, alternative programs that have a higher employability rate afterwards. Okay, great. Um, so I encourage um, our audience here, if you have any additional questions, please feel free to put that in the chat box. Um, in the meantime, I want to let everyone know that um, I know you will be wondering about the slide deck that Eva just shared. So we will get a PDF document from Eva afterwards, and uh, we will be sharing this, uh, the recording of this webinar, as well as uh, the documents, the material that Eva shared uh, with all of you. So you will have that information ready. Um, uh, while we'll wait and see if we have more questions coming in, um, Eva, I want to ask, uh, you mentioned about the education fairs uh, that you have in Brunei. So uh, is there any links or anything that you can share with us or maybe like all the institutions, I guess we can also reach out to you uh, individually. I will definitely share uh, the yeah, links. Maybe... Uh, his... Sorry. <laughs> Uh, I'll definitely no, share the, the links to the uh, the past uh, expo just to give it a, a, a context of where things are. Uh, but do I do welcome invite you, uh, the respective institutions to speak to us mm -hmm. to get a bit of download of uh, how the fair is, whether it is something that fits what they're looking for, uh, or whether it is uh, you know uh, uh, feasible to join because some of them do uh, include uh, fees, some of them don't. Uh, school visit is still the, the best strategy to come in here uh, in terms of going to each schools and, and uh, to have a chit chat with the students. Uh, and sometimes the school opens the floor to the parents to join in on those school visits. Okay, great. Um, yeah, and I know, uh, Eva, you're going to API, which you already mentioned that. So any institutions and our colleagues here on the call, if you're going to API, please get in touch with uh, Eva, uh, maybe arrange a meeting so uh, uh, to learn more about Brunei and um, how, uh, you know, Eva can support our institution with the effort there. Um, we are just about time uh, to, to finish. Um, if we don't have any additional questions right now, um, I'm going to quickly go over the upcoming webinars that BCCIE has uh, planned, as EJ previously, uh, previously mentioned. And uh, we will also be sending out uh, a follow-up email. So any additional questions that uh, we have, please feel free to let BCCIE know. And we're happy to forward those questions to uh, Ambra and Eva. Um, I'm just going to quickly share a slide uh, here. Um, so that uh, we can review. Um... Um, so I just want to let everyone know that uh, we do have an IRCC and BCPMP uh, winter update coming up next week. So if you haven't registered already, please feel free to go to uh, the website and register from there. 
Um, and also we're planning a series of uh, webinars that uh, sub focus on student support. Uh, these webinars will start from February 28. Uh, all the uh, detailed information will be available on BCCI event listing website. So please do go there and uh, take a look and register. And we look forward to uh, seeing you at those webinars. And also on March 19, there is another trade commissioner that we uh, update we're uh, organizing with uh, South Korea. So I just want to mention um, this uh, information so uh, that you can go to our website and take a further look. Um, um, oh, Mackie is asking, can we get contact info from of the speakers? Of course, yeah. I will include that uh, in the email that we're going to send out tomorrow. Um, so I guess uh, this is um, no problem. So this is uh, the end of uh, our uh, webinar today. Again, thank you so much, Eva and Ambra, for joining us and for sharing all the insights with us. Um, so um, so everyone, uh, we also want to uh, thank you for joining us uh, this afternoon. Um, when you log out on Zoom, there will be a survey, a very uh, brief survey. So if you can let us know how you think today's webinar went, that will be very helpful as we improve for future events. Um, again, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we hope everyone a great rest of the day and week. Thank Thanks, you, everyone. everyone.